Mental illness. It's still a taboo subject. Despite all the advances made in psychiatry over the last century, accurately diagnosing mental illness still remains elusive. We don't have an objective test to actually be able to prove a diagnosis. In depression, you cannot have a measure of depression in a blood test or in a brain scan. Over the decades, the American Psychiatric Association has attempted to classify and categorize mental illnesses. This is the DSM. It's the psychiatrist's Bible. Basically, it's a list of all the known psychiatric disorders. Now, in the 60s, it looked like this. So have we really discovered that many new mental disorders? Or are we just putting labels on normal behavior? The critics have said we're over medicalizing. They've blurred the boundary between normal and, path and pathological. Kevin was a victim of blurred boundaries. In the late 60s, when homosexuality was stigmatised, Kevin sought help on how to deal with being gay. His psychiatrist prescribed aversion therapy. So I was in this room, projection behind me, and they put electrodes in different parts of my body and there was like a, a condom arrangement on my penis, which was supposed to measure my sexual arousal. I was shown a series of slides of naked men. I get a shock, electric shock all over my body, quite strong, it hurt. It was to, to repel me from, the, from seeing a naked man. And then in the afternoon, um, I was given an injection, and as I, as I changed the photos, I'd get sicker and sicker until I was dry reaching. Did you agree to go into aversion therapy? Yeah, I thought it would cure me. Did you want to be cured? Yeah, at the time I did. This supposed therapy sent Kevin into a spiral of depression. My self-esteem just was nothing. I hated myself, really. I just thought the only way out was to die. There's, I couldn't, I couldn't live like this. So I took an overdose of um, tranquilizers, and I don't remember anything else until I woke up back in the hospital. Now, it wasn't until 1973 that homosexuality was declassified on the DSM's list of mental disorders. Yeah, I remember when reading that homosexuality was no longer classed as a mental illness or mental disorder. I was very angry. Clearly there have been some horrendous um, mistakes that have been made. Homosexuality being thought to be a, a disease is just awful and, um, and wrong. And uh, we've moved completely away from that. Now, I've spent some time looking through this manual and it seems as if virtually all human behaviour could be classified as an aberration. Now, the consequence of this, of course, is that all of us, in some way or another, could be labelled mentally ill. Firstly, you're not saying that this person is insane. To equate mental illness with insanity is wrong. OK, mental illness is very broad. And all of us may have mental illness, just as we have physical illnesses. We have colds and coughs, we have toothaches, headaches. No, no, no one is totally free of physical illness. So it may well be that no one is totally free of mental illness to a small degree. The rise in mental illnesses parallels the growth in the use of psychotropic drugs, which are now the most commonly prescribed psychiatric medicines. The use of medication, increase in use of medication, is not a bad thing necessarily if there is untreated psychiatric disorder out there. And in fact, we still feel that many psychiatric patients are not receiving the treatment. But there are concerns that mental conditions are being invented by psychiatrists at the behest of drug companies looking for new ways to use their medications. In 2006, this paper was published stating that over half the panel members on the DSM had close financial ties to the pharmaceutical industry and that that presented a major conflict of interest. 
But Professor Sachdev says the content of the DSM has less to do with the influence from drug companies and more to do with personal bias. Many experts have a self-interest in promoting their particular bandwagon or their particular disorder. They don't necessarily do it because they are being paid by a drug company to do it. Because if I'm working on, say, panic disorder, I'd want those to go into the classification, then that, because that's my academic work, and I'd really want it to be recognised. There are actually over 200 depressive disorders. So I, I think that what has occurred over the last 30 years has created tremendous confusion and certainly hasn't advanced research findings. So are we medicating people for what would be described as normal behaviour? Certainly with depression, there is a real risk of confusing uh, what is a clinical depression with, as against what is the normative depression that every human being experiences. If you pathologise normal human sadness and misery, then you run the risk of giving treatment when it's not really required. Overdiagnosis is a problem, but so is missing a diagnosis. I went to GPs and they gave me generic antidepressant medication that did not help at all. I went to psychiatrists who gave me medication that didn't help. So very soon I gave up. How bad did things become? I've had the noose around my neck. Um, been very close to suicide. To the outside world, it appeared as if Wayne had everything. We had good relationships. The peak of my football career, I was in the fire brigade when I had children. There was always, always sadness hanging over my shoulder to an extent where it was unbearable. It took 43 years to be correctly diagnosed with melancholia. And although he's always been a great father, Wayne says his illness has cost him dearly. It's cost me relationships. It's cost me careers. It's cost me financially. Even with the right diagnosis, mental illness is still an ongoing struggle for Wayne but he's determined to make something positive out of his situation. With the speaking I do to community and corporate groups, I believe that I can help save people, help educate people to seek treatment as early as they possibly can. Early intervention in psychiatry has always attracted controversy. The critics believe that putting a label on something too early can lead to unnecessary medication and social stigma, but others vigorously defend it. The trouble with psychiatry has been that it's waited, you know, like an ambulance at the bottom of a cliff until people are absolutely desperate. And, and um, this is why we're seeing so many um, preventable suicides. It's, it's actually picking up people with a need for care, but at the early stage, rather than waiting until they're you know, in, in dire straits or in desperate situations. We can reduce that risk quite significantly through simple and, and safe treatments, such as cognitive behaviour therapy, things like fish oil or omega-3 fatty acids. They might be more subtle ways of um, protecting the brain during this, this, this period of life. Professor Kolkani says early intervention is only possible if we find better ways of testing for mental illnesses. The field of psychiatry desperately needs objective diagnoses. We could actually save patients from being treated with the wrong sorts of treatments. Okay. Professor Kolkani's research has focused on trying to accurately diagnose depression by measuring the electrical waves in the brain. What we're looking at is the emotional regulators of the brain to see whether we can use the balance system as a marker of psychiatric and neurological conditions. By shaking up the balance system in the inner ear, the researchers can measure the differences in electrical signals between healthy and depressed patients. An example is here, where we've got, in fact, the red curve, which is the normal subjects amalgamated and people with depression amalgamated. And as you can see, the blue curve, which is the depressed uh, curve, is actually quite a different look to the, to the red. 
Right, so you, but really you're trying to standardise what normal is and then standardise what depression is and yes. compare the two? Yes. And the eventual hope is that you can have a test and the clinician can look at it and go, yes, that's a depression. It's hoped that biomarkers could open up a whole new field in psychiatric medicine. The future of diagnostics should have a lot of emphasis put into biological diagnostic tools of all sorts. Biomarkers are the buzzword. Our understanding of the brain will become much more sophisticated in the future. Now, how that will translate into better diagnoses and better treatments, we still do not know. In the meantime, psychiatrists wait for the next instalment of classifications, but some are not holding their breath. We're not particularly interested, to be honest. Um, we, we are working very hard on a, a proactive um, uh, system which um, allows people to get the help they need uh, when they need it.